Bali TV. Everybody in the house, love. You got me yeah. into acid. <laughs> you got you into acid, man. <laughs> and stripped off naked and stared at my hand for two hours. My mum always said, stay clear of green people. <laughs> stay <it> off. <laughs> That's the one. Still a banger. It was never a banger. <laughs> That's not a trick question, you bastard. They're tires. You didn't ask what kind. Get fucked. Ah, uh, you're a little bit tired. I feel nourished in my soul. <laughs> you're such a shit liar. No wonder you got caught, hat. You can't like the shit! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello. It's me. The man you never thought you needed and you still don't. It's Joe, the host of Bally TV. <laughs> Welcome, Laura. From churches. Hey man, how's it going? <laughs> Our second guest. In the middle, Adam Greenwood. How are you doing? How are you, mate? Yeah, amazing. Grenade. On the right, we have the man from the Isle of Dogs, Hack Baker. Woo woo woo! Uh, well, thanks for coming, mate. How are you feeling? I'm alright, mate. I'm not hungover, so I'm happy. Okay, good. So you're not you're not in denial. No, 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 man. <laughs> Lauren, hello. How are you? What have you been up to today? I'm good. I'm um, not hungover, which is a surprise, Glaswegian. Um, <laughs> but it's morning time here, so I feel like I have to be responsible and not not be drinking beer, which looks very delicious. I can see other people doing it, but I have tea, which feels not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Hack, am I right? I was told you were at the protest. Yeah, that's why I got my military charges on, yeah. <laughs> How, what was the vibe there? Was it good? Yeah, it was, it was new. It felt new. Everyone felt quite um, united. Uh, a lot of different races there. It's quite new, really. It's usually just one set of people trying to reveal for something. But I see a multitude of faces and colours, which was quite cool. For me, the test it's a, for me the test is the ultimate one. It's the test of time. Absolutely, Lauren. What's the situation like in um, it or the area of LA you're in? What's it like? It doesn't look good. Like I'm gonna say, we're still having the same conversation with the same police department this far after it's yeah. And we've been trying to make sure that we're watching a broad array of the local news channels because you're definitely seeing some things on some channels and not on other channels. And there's been a lot of oh look. Cops are kneeling with the protesters and everything's fine now in downtown LA. But then when you look on Twitter, it's not. The thing is, does it feel like a start? Because it has been going on for centuries. It's, no, it's... it doesn't feel like a start because in order, in order for things to really change, like people who really believe in this have to assert themselves as leaders. As much as people want to bloody go on marches and whatnot, they still, they're still not really willing to like... Uh, challenge that that initial feeling they get in their heart. The, the only reason why I, I was thinking that it might be a feeling like the start is because it's a global thing now. It's recognised globally. There are marches going on. Because Mark Duggan was shot in 2001? No, 2011, sorry. Um, there weren't marches going on in Washington about Mark Duggan's murder. Hack, you said something really sick in one of your interviews. I loved it. And it kind of rings true. Good people feel synonymous with pain. That idea that you can actually truly try and find, become an empath, you truly find someone else's pain and, and seek yeah. it, almost seek it. Not just when there's a rally, you think about it. But I just think with, with all of that, no matter how successful that is, if there's still only eight people in a boardroom making decisions for the billions of us, they're not going to give up their fucking wealth for us. This is something that's been going on for 500 years. And that privilege is not saying that they're just going to fucking let go just like that. And even though you're talking about, like, you're talking about the oligarchs, they're like the eight, the top, top, top. Then you go down another echelon and there's, like, there's fucking 400 people that are, like, that are still trillionaires 
we don't know their names and they're like fucking there's no way that's gonna happen and then under that there's a fucking millions and millions and millions of other people that ain't willing to let go of that as well and in fucking america they've all they're all fucking armed so it's not an easy fight it sounds like we're starting a revolution hack <laughs> like sorry i'm being stopped please give Give Lauren's uh, head like a big uh, gaffer tape headband. Keep it on. I kind of got a weird butt cut anyway because I, I haven't cut it for ages. So a butt I, cut? I could just, yeah, it's, just, it's become a little off. <laughs> um, I really, really need a piss. Does anyone else need a piss? Uh, I just did one on a bottle. Did you actually? So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing one now. Yeah, yeah, I did like, yeah, definitely, yeah. This is like... I'm really... Full. That's full. And that's what I'm drinking, yeah. But I'll go and get another beer while you go to it. Yeah, magic. Yeah. That's, that's tall life, that is. I'm so proud of you, man. And I really, really yeah, appreciate yeah. Your, di your diligence on staying on camera. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking boss. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I was going to make it a big deal, but I thought, no, let me just deal with it and be quiet. But yeah. Lauren, I'll any, get any beer. bottles? <laughs> <laughs> not, not yet. I could go on my teacup, I suppose. Um, <laughs> right. So we've all just come back from a break. Um, I weed. <laughs> so on more on more poignant and relevant things right now. I've been talking about white privilege in our music and obviously in interviews and stuff for a long time. What it is is just a change and a shift in perspective where I understand what my privilege is. It's not like, you know, like I've I'm a middle class white guy. So that means I have class privilege and I also have race privilege. That doesn't mean to say that when my mum died, I didn't feel pain, or when my daughter died, I didn't feel pain. What it means is, on a day-to-day -day level, my perspective is privileged. Privileged in the media, in advertising, in education, everything is from the male white gaze, almost always. Even now, as a reaction to it, it's a reaction to the male white gaze. So it's just about accepting that, and my acceptance of white privilege was to, uh, it doesn't make me an apologist, it just makes me an acknowledgist. It makes me acknowledge that. And what can I do to spread, as you say, Hack, the love? Empathy is about looking to feel other people's pain and to mm. change your world so that everyone has equal opportunity, so that they don't feel that pain. Just want to say a quick thing about um, privilege is, unfortunately, it seems like privilege is the biggest obstacle to understanding your own privilege. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's difficult for people that have known nothing else to understand the concept of the privilege that they sit in. Yeah, it's like, it's, 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 it's denaturalizing what you've always lived in. But like, you know, it's kind of like, I'm not going to have, to, well, my, my daughter is, is going to be a woman unless she decides otherwise. And I'm going to have to, you know, explain the privileges that I have that she doesn't. But, you know, like black parents and Asian parents have to explain to their kids at a young age that the world doesn't stop spinning and will treat them worse because of the color of their skin. You're going to have to work harder to get a job that a white person wants because it's a racist world. It has to be something that we as a race actually want because the conversation has to go from you know black white green yellow purple and some you know and so it has to cross it and just talk to your neighbors and it has to be like a domino effect all around and, and that's the only way i feel like we're going to get a change but it has to start within us before you go to tackle the powers that be if it don't start there then nothing's going to happen I would be I would be slightly unnerved if I was talking to green people though. I'm going to pull you up on that. Yeah. <laughs> my my mum always said, "Stay clear of green people. <laughs> Stay away from them, folks." <laughs> Bye, TV. Do you know what? Speaking of seeing seeing green people. Greenwood, 
You got me yeah. into acid. You were the first. You, whoa, you... whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> hey, listen, you got you into acid, man. The path was already. <laughs> you were you were halfway up that path, man. I just helped. I just helped you and stick to the you know stick to the road and not wander into the moors. You're a real piece of shit. That's not how it went down at all. <laughs> What actually happened was... Man, I looked after you anyway, didn't I? Yeah, it was a beautiful thing. I was telling my dad about it. For the, the first 10 minutes until you ran off. Yeah, so what happened was, right, we're, <laughs> at, Gl we're at Glastonbury and Greenwood, in his typical way, was like, do you want to like, do you want to go see 17 and do some acid? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recommend it. Um, and this is, this is, I'm just speaking, I've been sober eight months and all that stuff. So, but this is, uh, so one, one of the bits of advice you gave me, which is a beautiful thing, was to take it in very small doses. So I had a quarter of a tab and then uh, we went off to see 17. But I was walking and this guy turned around and it, it, the, the acid had just started kicking in, Hack. And this guy mm. just turns to me and goes, Michael Jackson's just died. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> So like, <laughs> suddenly I was like, shit. So I kind of had like about a two second panic and turned to my left and Greenwood, you disappeared by that point. You were like looking for Brian fucking Harvey. So I went to a porter cabin and stripped off naked and stared at my hand for two hours. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's literally all that happened. And, uh, that, was, that was probably more fun than E17, to be honest. <laughs> Fuck off, mate. E17, a class. Everybody in the house, love. Just keep uh, them away from jacket potatoes. Right, I will personally send 50 quid to any, any one of you three who can name all of E17. Brian Harvey, we, all, we can all do. But I think, Brian, Brian yeah, Harvey, we all know and love, yeah? Yeah, obviously, yeah. The pill monster himself, the jacket potato <laughs> eating fiend. Uh, Tony, John was the one with the goatee. I mean, we're in, a, we're in a sort of position now where you could just reel off any names, really. I can't. <laughs> we didn't know. You know, well, there's Terry, there's Sean. Come on, man. Terry is the final one. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> it's Terry, I swear it is. Get that 50 quid wired to me right now. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not paying you for that, mate. You only named one. Um, we had a, a Christmas party uh, before Christmas, obviously. And uh, we were putting on what we believed to be classic Christmas songs, but it was like mostly Americans and only three British people. And when Stay came on, we were all like losing our shit and they Amazing. had no idea what was yeah. going on. And it was just three drunk British people going, Stay now! And, <laughs> <laughs> I love oh, yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, Stay now. That was like, I, that's the only vinyl I've ever bought. <laughs> All right, what's the first fucking album you all bought? Spice Girls, Spice. Who'd have thought? Uh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> that and then album. loads of like now, now compilations as well. Spice Girls, absolute monsters. What about you, Greenwood? Falco, Amadeus. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why is that? That's listen, so... I've said a lot of I've said a lot of <laughs> funny so stuff weird. so far. That is not that is not a joke. What? <laughs> Falco oh, Amadeus. That is a beast of a tune. Come on. No. I mean, right. it's, it's, it's a beast of a tune like the drug Spices. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some people like it. It, it kills yeah, a lot. Um, yeah. Hack. I think it was like, I'm, the tape I've got was I'm, I'm Blue. I'm Blue. Ah. Da -ba -dee -da -ba -da. <laughs> That's the one. No, my brother nicked it, but yeah, that was the one. Yeah. I think it was about 36 when that came out, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Eiffel 65, was it? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Fuck, I ain't got a screwy about it. Yeah, still it, still it? a banger. It was never, yeah. a, it was <laughs> never a banger. It was always a banger. In my mind, it is. If that comes on, I'll, I'm going to do a two sip. Gonna. Like, I'm sure if I listen to it now, like, in my mind, it has this, like, massive production beats and I'm sure it doesn't but in my memory it's just it popped a school disco off every time like mm. without fail yeah <laughs> without if, fail. if the dance floor does get a bit too busy you can always drop Amadeus and then clear it <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell mine was Simpsons Sing the Blues mm. that's sick that's not, it was sick that's not an album yeah it was Do the Bartman um, Look at All Those that's Fools blues. Lisa Sings the Blues Lisa Ooh. Sings the Blues is a blues classic, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So we don't want to go into it too deeply or just talk about what everyone else talks about. Is there anything positive that you... I, I speak, spoke to a lot of people in, in isolation and shit. Some people I know have, have managed to find a bit of peace or find something good about themselves that only an extreme situation like this would have brought on. But is there anything you found out about yourselves recently that is positive from this? I really enjoy my own company again. It's awesome. Yeah? For years, I've been living on my brother's sofa for about eight years, and I moved out about seven weeks ago in quarantine. It's a fucking advert I found on Gumtree, and I moved in like two days later, and I've just got this place to myself. I don't have to talk to no cunt. Don't have to write yeah. to the phone. Your brother thinks that's oh. him now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's a, we, we always somehow still end up together nearly every day, but um, yeah, fucking, I don't, yeah, it's fucking, I can just talk to myself and sort my own problems out with, with myself. And I've turned into, I'm, I'm a great chef, but I'm even better now, so yeah, it's better. So. What, what's, your, what's your vibe? What, what's your, like, what's your dish? Depends what you like, mate. If you want something, let me know and I'll sort it out. <laughs> you are you are not only you are not only a good chef, you're a very fucking confident one hack. No, I'm a I great agree. chef. I've lived on my own since I was fourteen and I had to cook. Oh amazing. Not that you lived it on your own since you were fourteen, but that you've uh I was amazing too. Was it? Was it? Amazing too. Yeah. I couldn't have handled it at fourteen. You could you could it would just be part of, it would just be part of who you were who you are if you if you had done yeah, that. You know, I left home when I was 14 as well, and it's just part of your character, and I wouldn't want to take it away from myself. It's Exactly. You know. But hold on. Sorry, Greenwood. I don't mean to interrupt you there because you are sharing, but I know for a fact <laughs> you left when you were 14. You didn't learn how to cook. You, you got into, <laughs> like, sniffing glue and robbing. Listen. <laughs> like Listen, there was some cooking that went on. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> oh... But yeah, cool. like isolation is one of them things where I just thought I had to really be careful because you are just rattling around in your head all the time. You just I was got in a... therapy just before my fair. I had to do my last therapy session, last two of them on the phone or three of them. And in the end, I didn't even answer the last one because I thought well, it's not even the fucking same. I actually don't see this lovely bird called uh, Anna. And then um, yeah, it was wonderful, but then all this shit happened. I mean, uh, I did uh, I did one on the phone, did two on the phone, sure. And I just thought, like, it just didn't really work after that. And she was like, recommend that we, we continue these, but you need to continue these other people because basically you're a nutter. Wait, you were too far gone for the NHS. <laughs> yes, she, <I> <laughs> she, she was like, you need to do more. And then, but then I thought, I ain't gonna bother answer. I can't be up to answer the last one. She's gonna pack me up and get, let me speak to this other fucking. No, she was lovely though, but then. <laughs> She's a bus driver I'm... now. <laughs> 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 she has knocked it on the head. <laughs> I'm in cognitive behavioural therapy, right? Do you know yeah. there's a really there's a really cool tactic hack that I was taught, where if you're someone that spends time. Not procrastinate is a shitty word. If, you, if that first hurdle is you overthink things and you end up worrying about things or trying to strategize how to start it and you end up staying stagnant for an hour or two. Um, one really cool thing to do is you write a list for the next day. So you write a bunch of things down you've got to do. But you give yourself, like, say at 5 p.m. tomorrow, I give myself half an hour worry time. That makes sense, man. I can't lie. Actually try it. Please, let, let us know. Yeah, I will. I might write a schedule on my radio and get on with it. You realise you're not going to get your deposit back if you keep writing on your fucking radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is wipeable. You're lying now. There's no such thing as a whiteboard radio hack. You're just a vandal. <laughs> can I show you? Can I show you that I'm not... Yeah, lying? of course you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's me big... Oh, shit! Yeah. And I'll wipe that off. Oh, wait, it's a bit dry now. <laughs> He's well, used a Sharpie. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. But That's amazing. Yeah, I have got one. 
I apologise for doubting you, mate. That's fucking great. Lauren, how about you? Um, I feel really nice. I don't like quarantine me that much, to be honest. Uh, no. Yeah, I feel like it's shown to me that a lot of how much of my identity is wrapped up in my work and, like, productivity. Like, not even, like, being on tour, but, like, I think that was an interesting thing because I'm like, well, at some point you won't be doing that anymore. But I've been doing it since I was like 23. So it's like you need to figure out how to separate and be happy without that. But I think it's just, I think I spend a lot of time inside my own brain anyway. And then I'm locked mm. inside inside my own brain all day. <laughs> mm. So I think yeah. that's what I mean about getting tired of myself. Where I'm like, oh, good. We're going to worry about this again. Great. Greenwood, what's your vibe? I picked my skateboard back up and I've been doing that as my exercise and getting out and doing a bit of skateboarding, which is which has been great for me. Um, Not for your front tooth though, eh? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> 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 only, only joking. The least of the, oh, you're a limited the, the least of the issues <laughs> as well, yes. Um, and the other thing no. was I decided I was going to tr- start to learn to play acoustic guitar and I've been really enjoying it. It's been really cathartic. So um, obviously you're going to play us a song now, right? Um, go I on, s- just a bit. Go on, go on, just a bit. Maybe, just, maybe just wait till I'm ready to support idols and then we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I mean, i have to start writing you gonna something. Try <laughs> Who, who's going to sell our t-shirts? I would just get Deb and John on it again. No, um, we'll get someone else yeah. in. We'll get someone else in. All right. <laughs> yeah, you don't want them talking right. to the public. No, no, no. If you were on death row and you were about to get the chair or the injection, your choice, or firing squad, they still do that in some states, because why not? <laughs> um, obviously, as, as just, just in case you're new to the show or new to me, um, I'm completely against the death penalty. Um, but I just think it's an interesting concept. What would be your last meal should you be able to choose it? Um, I'd also like to let you know that Texas have cancelled your last meal. You can't have a last meal. Can you imagine how fucked up that is? If you were the, the first guy, you're like, you're on fucking death row for four months or whatever, or, t- or 12 years or something, and then you're the first guy you're like that. your last meal. <laughs> And apparently, yes. <laughs> well, I don't know. We, stopped, we stopped doing that yesterday. It's, that is fucked. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like yesterday, but it, there had to be a cut-off point. I think that's fu- like obviously jo- it sounds like I'm joking about it's it, up, but man, it's man. fucked. It's like you laugh, but that is messed you're murdering up, someone and you're not letting them have a choice of what food they eat. Cunts, absolute cunts. You said to me, I can't have steak and chips. I'm kicking off. I might as well just kick off. I said, you're going to kill me anyway, you cunts. I ain't going nowhere, so I'll get mistaken and chip. I don't want him laying salt on that fucking steak as well. I ain't going nowhere. Um, it's a very close toss-up, yeah, between good piece of jerk chicken and a fried dumpling or steak and chips. Well, you can have both. That, that would yeah, I'll have them both. remit of $40. Both, yeah. That's a beautiful choice. What would be your biggest regret? What, before I die? My biggest regret? Yeah, you're about to get the chair, mate. You've had your jerk chicken, your dumpling, and your steak and chips. You're a bit full. Ah. Uh, and don't make that your regret, because that nah. would be shit. My regrets, gen- generically in life, something that I regret. I'd regret getting caught, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, you've made me laugh like James great, Corden, great and uh, that's the end. That's the end of that fucking segment because everyone's going to say the same thing now. <laughs> Lauren, a pint of shite. What the I fuck's a pint of, of shite? shite? And it's really hard to find. Just like yeah. a it's pint a, it's of like, like a fucking lager, like yeah. a solid oh. fucking lager. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would like, uh, I would like a pint of shite, or uh, well, and then I want a good Glasgow Glasgow curry. That's what I want. I want like. A black dal, some sag paneer, maybe some chili king, king prawns. Um, normally, I wouldn't go for a garlic naan, but if no one's going to be smelling my breath, I'll go for the garlic naan. Um, right, Greenwood, you absolute fucking fiend. What are you going to eat? I got to thinking. Um, maybe fugu, he is thinking as well. Which, as we all know, 
is Japanese puffer fish. <laughs> and, was, and of course, there's only a few chefs in the world that can safely prepare a puffer fish. Um, so that's... Oh, yeah, the blow, the blow up so one. That might buy you yeah, an extra yeah, yeah. day, but if not, it might kill you anyway. And then you've had the last laugh, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe a sort of fish and chips, but with oh. puffer fish and beans, which I don't think has ever been on a plate. Fried fugu and chips. <laughs> you know, I can't win against you, boys. It's not a competition hack. We're all friends here. I'm gonna do a bit of TV shit now. I'm really bad at like scripted shit. Let me try it. Yeah. Speaking of competitions. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, yeah, um, we, we, um, we're gonna uh, now do a competition. Um, Lauren and Hack, do you mind watching and, and helping out Adam for a no question problem. each? Try my best. Sick. Adam, you're now about to enter the marshmallow challenge. You've got to answer 10 questions. Every question, you put a marshmallow in your mouth. If you get a question wrong, the next one, you've got to put two in your mouth. Right, put one in your mouth. Question number one. Is everyone ready? Yeah. <laughs> what is the largest landlocked country in the world? I don't know. All right, the answer is Kazakhstan. Put two in your Never mouth, please, Greenwood. Huh. Um, question two. How many three-pointers did Shaquille O'Neal score in his NBA career? Think about it, it's Shaq. This is notorious for his three-pointers. Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> she is in LA. So three points, and three points are when they're further away, so if it's yeah. past yeah. Out the, D. the line. Outside the D, yeah. I don't know how long he played for. Uh, he played long enough to score more than he fucking did. Controversial. Uh, I don't know. Ten. Ten thousand. <laughs> that's more than the know. best. That's more than Reggie Miller, Lauren. But good for trying. I don't know how many. How long's a game? I don't really don't know. Clearly, I'm not well versed on this. No, stuff. no, it's cool. The answer is one, Lauren. One. Oh. oh, no, he's there. Well, yeah. But somewhere between what? Question number three. Oh, this one's really hard as well. If you lived to 80 years old, how many times would your heart beat? I'll give you a, I'll give you a little bit of help. You can get it within the nearest hundred. I, I could probably sit and get quite close. If I if I have time to work it out, go on in. But that time is that time is made uncomfortable by the ridiculous amount of marshmallows that I've got in my mouth. Guess you fucking you you weird face um, bastard. Fifteen million. <laughs> oh, three point three billion. That's, That's a lot, lot, isn't it? Yeah, put two more in, please. Fuck. Well, how many Premier League teams have won the title since the Premier League started in 92 93? Mm. Packs counting. 17. What? 17. <laughs> Isn't that nearly all the teams in the Premier League? Oh, I see. Um, you can answer it again. Eight. Eight. Completely wrong. Mm. Um, six. How many hearts does an octopus have? Four. Four! It's three. Uh, two more, please, mate. What's the name for a group of ferrets? You should get this one, you're from Guildford. <laughs> Oh, so good. That's a different animal collective name. It's a business of ferrets. Oh, That's good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's lovely. Mm. Sick. I want to be a ferret. 
Right, <laughs> moving on. Have you put two more in? Uh, question seven, my man. Are you ready, bro? Which company produces the most tyres in the world per year? Mm. This is a fun one. Have a think. Mm. Use your nugget. Oh! Mm. Oh, good year! Mm. Incorrect. The answer is Lego. Are they all trick questions, are they? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a trick question, you bastard. They're tires. You didn't ask what kind. Get fucked. There go. Right. The movement of the computer mouse in is measured in what unit? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Wait. Go on. You know it. You got it. What is it? Not me. Oh. I'll give it you to me. Give it to I'll give it to me. Hmm. <laughs> Don't give it to Hack. Don't give it. Okay, he doesn't know. Mm. All right, you've, you've given away your last lifeline, and you've got a mouthful of goo. Um, the answer is Mickey's. Mickey's. Mickey's, like Mickey Mouse. Mickey's. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. This is your penultimate question. You're, you're at the moment behind Dev. Behind Dev. Okay. What is Postman Pat's surname? Oh, uh, I don't know why. Oh, like, uh, like, why is this so fucking funny to me? It's tragic. I'm 35 years old. Um, mm. Hack, hack. Are you fucking googling? No, I'm so... <laughs> You're such a shit liar. No wonder you got caught, hack. You can't lie for shit. Um. <laughs> Sit me out of this one, lads. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this one's. I might know the answer. <laughs> Clifton, Clifton. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he didn't I cheat, didn't though. Cheat. That he didn't Google. That was uh, just that was sharp thinking, bro. Sharp thinking. Uh, so you've only got to put one in for your last question. You've got to pronounce this French word. Oh! I have been sick in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I dealt with it. You, you, know? you dealt with it. You're a trooper. I'd like to congratulate you and Hack and Lauren for your hard work. Uh, Greenwood Woo! is now number one on the leaderboard. Yeah, out, out of two. Let's look at Carol do work. Yeah. yeah! I'm gonna get I'm just gonna get rid of this. Yeah, 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 do that. Um all right, whilst whilst he's gone, um I just wanna say to you guys, Lauren and Hack, thank you so fucking much for your earnest chat and your time. I really appreciate it. I feel nourished in my soul. Thank you for having <laughs> Thank you for having us. And and Greenwood, whilst you're all vomiting, uh, I thank the others, but thanks very much for being here, my man. That's all right, no problem, mate. I love you. I love you too, very, very much. I appreciate you coming. Right, uh, now uh, I have a friend uh, from, from the Idols clan, uh, and his name is John Clay. Uh, welcome, John. Thanks very much for joining us. No worries. Thanks for letting me be on the show. It's our privilege, trust me. How are you feeling? Um, you know what, that's a very complicated question these days. So we've got you on, right? Because at the end of every show, hopefully, we're going to get a friend on to have a rant called the People's Soapbox. So what, you, what have you got for us, John? Okay, so my situation is thus. Um, we've all seen what happened regarding George Floyd. Yes. Uh, regarding the narrative that we've got at the moment is that apparently everyone can pat themselves on the back because on Tuesday they were given an opportunity to promote the idea that they cared. Now, some people took the opportunity in the right way. Some people didn't do anything at all. Some people, well, they, they did okay. Yeah. I've got a fantastic quote here from uh, Banksy. At first, I thought I should just shut up and listen to black people about this issue. But why would I do that? 
it's not their problem, it's mine. People of color have been failed by the system, the white system. A curtain pipe dug through the apartment of the people living downstairs. This faulty system is making their life a misery, but it's not their job to fix it. They can't. No one will let them in the apartment upstairs. This is a white problem. And if white people don't fix it, someone will have to come upstairs and kick the door in. Magic. Unfortunately, we live in the world where when you talk about white privilege, people feel that if they've, they've achieved something, whether they've educated themselves or, or been in a band or, or got to a certain place, when you tell them about white privilege, some people think that you're trying to point at them and say that they are bad people. And they should feel guilty about what their forefathers created around us. No, it's not about that. It's about saying the system hurts everyone. If you, if you don't have a, a curriculum in school that shows the entirety of our culture, you have damaged individuals that come out of those schools and become police officers and make mm -hmm. life terrible after warehouse parties. <laughs> you have people that go into the media, that go into law, that have a very jaundiced way of treating people that look like me. If we realize our history, this is going to sound so fucking cheesy now. If we realize our history, we're not doomed to repeat it. Your segment is normally the people's soapbox that um, I, I would then respond to and then give a final thought. But to be honest, I think what you've just said is, is the final thought. That's a beautiful thing to start with. I think from here on out, beyond the reaction to what you're saying, the chaos, the reaction to that is a spark, is the opening of a conversation, but it can only be the start. What happens now is organisation, education and integration. I really appreciate you coming on the show, yeah. John. I really do. And I couldn't have said it more beautifully myself. So thank you very much. Um, oh, wow. Thank you. John, you, you need to... I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I leave you now. I've got to introduce the song. You've got to in song. introduce the, the, the song. <laughs> Which one? Uh, the song's called Grounds. People. Lovers of the world and hopefully people that understand that love is all you really need and a lot of fucking action, please check out the song by Idols. Here it comes. Thank you, brother. That's okay. All right, I'll see you <laughs> soon. I mean, do what I love and fuck.
Viking Sanders. 